Welcome to the second session of the teleconference. In our previous session, we told you about the bacterial infection, possible bacterial infection, and we will show you the video right now. And after seeing the video, we will go for discussion about uh, bacterial infection, then we will go for diarrhea, and then malnutrition. So please uh, have a view of the video now. For a possible bacterial infection. Young infants can become sick and die very quickly from a bacterial infection. They may show only non-specific signs of an infection, such as few movements, fever, low body temperature, nasal flaring or fast breathing. Check every sick young infant for all of the signs of a serious bacterial infection. We will now show you how to assess a young infant for possible bacterial infection. First, ask the mother... Has the young infant had convulsions? Make sure that the young infant is calm and then count the breaths in one minute. The cut-off rate for fast breathing in young infants is higher than it is for older children. A young infant aged up to two months has fast breathing if you count 60 breaths per minute or more. The breathing of young infants is often irregular. The young infant will occasionally stop breathing for a few seconds. This may then be followed by a period of very fast breathing. Therefore, if you count 60 breaths or more, repeat the count to see if the fast breathing is sustained. Only if the breathing rate is 60 breaths or more on the second count should you consider it to be fast breathing in a young infant. Next, look for severe chest indrawing. Chest indrawing occurs when the effort required to breathe in is much greater than normal. To look for chest indrawing, you must know when the child is breathing in. When the child breathes in, the upper chest and abdomen move out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in. This is a healthy child with normal breathing. When the child breathes in, the upper chest and abdomen move out. The lower chest also moves out. This child has chest in drawing. When the child breathes in, the upper chest and abdomen move out, as in the healthy child, but the lower chest moves in. Chest in drawing is this inward movement of the lower chest wall when the child breathes in. Look again. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in. When the child breathes in, the upper chest and abdomen move out, 
while the lower chest moves in. The lower chest wall goes in when the child breathes in. Chest in drawing is only significant if it is present all the time and definitely visible. This child is breastfeeding. If you see chest in drawing only when a child is upset or trying to feed, but not when resting peacefully, do not call it chest in drawing. This child only has chest in drawing when feeding. Therefore, we would not call it chest in drawing. Mild chest in drawing is normal in young infants because their chest wall is soft. It is not a sign of illness in young infants. This young infant has mild chest in drawing. However, severe chest in drawing is a sign of illness. Severe in drawing is a very deep movement and is easy to see. This young infant has severe chest in drawing. We will now assess this young infant for fast breathing and chest in drawing. You should write down the number of breaths you count and then decide whether or not the child has fast breathing. You will be told when to start and when to stop counting. After one minute, this symbol will appear on the screen and there will be a pause. You will have time to write down the result of your count and to decide if the child has fast breathing. Count the breaths Abdi takes in one minute. Find an area of the abdomen to watch. Prepare to start counting. Start counting now. Stop counting. How many breaths did you count? We counted 70 breaths per minute. As Abdi is less than two months old, and we counted 60 breaths per minute or more, you would repeat the count to see if the fast breathing rate is maintained. If you again count 60 breaths or more in the second count, Abdi has fast breathing. Now look for chest in drawing. Abdi has severe chest in drawing. The indrawing is deep and easy to see. Look for nasal flaring. This young infant has nasal flaring. Nasal flaring is a widening of the nostrils when the young infant breathes in. Look and listen for grunting. This young infant has grunting. You may hear short, soft sounds as the infant is breathing out.
This young infant has grunting. Look and feel for bulging fontanelle. The fontanelle is the soft spot on the top of the young infant's head where the bones have not formed completely. Check the fontanelle while you are holding the child in an upright position and the child is not crying. This child's fontanelle is normal. If the fontanelle is bulging rather than flat, this may mean the young infant has meningitis, a serious bacterial infection. This child has a bulging fontanelle. Look for pus draining from the ear. Look closely into each of the child's ears. Pus draining from the ear is a sign of infection. Look at the umbilicus. Is it red or draining pus? This is a normal umbilicus. It has no redness or pus. This umbilicus is showing some signs of infection. Look for skin pustules. Examine the skin on the entire body. Skin pustules are red spots or blisters which contain pus. If there are many pustules or a big boil, this is a serious bacterial infection. This young infant has many skin pustules. Measure temperature or feel for fever or low body temperature. Fever is uncommon in the first two months of life. If a young infant has fever, this may mean the young infant has a serious bacterial infection. In addition, fever may be the only sign of a serious bacterial infection. Young infants can also respond to infection by dropping their body temperature. If you do not have a thermometer, feel the infant's abdomen or underarm to determine if it feels hot or unusually cool. See if the young infant is lethargic or unconscious. It is normal for young infants to sleep most of the time. The young infant should wake to noise or if he is moved. There is no difficulty in waking this young infant. He is not lethargic. He stays awake. If a young infant does not wake up during the assessment, flick the sole two to three times and look for the response. This young infant wakes up and remains awake. This young infant wakes up momentarily, 
but sleeps again. He has poor response to flicking of the soul and is therefore lethargic. Look at the young infant's movements. Are they less than normal? An awake young infant, such as this, will normally move his arms or legs, or turn his head, several times in a minute. Observe this as you do the whole assessment. This young infant has normal movements. This young infant is moving less than normal. Next, check the young infant for severe jaundice. A young infant with severe jaundice needs urgent attention in a hospital. Mild jaundice during the first week of life is usually normal, but yellow palms and soles always indicate severe pathological jaundice. Look for yellow palms and soles. Press the soles with your thumbs to blanch, remove your thumbs and look for yellow discoloration. Repeat the process for palms. This young infant does not have yellow palms and soles. This young infant has yellow palms and soles. This completes the assessment of a young infant for possible bacterial infection and for severe jaundice. Uh, now you saw the video picture of possible serious bacterial infection. We evaluated all the signs that were shown to you. Now I will request Dr. Chalani uh, to tell the students how this will be classified. Having assessed the child for possible bacterial infection and jaundice, now we will proceed for the classification. Now here, just focus on your chart booklet, page number 1. Now all the children who have been assessed for possible bacterial infection, they have to be classified for infection, possible bacterial infection or local bacterial infection and they will also be classified for jaundice and for the low body temperature. Now the principles as it has been said in the case management process that we have to start from top and then going down. Now we will always start from top. Now there are several signs which are mentioned in the red box. So if you find any of these signs which is present it places the child into possible bacterial infection. 
if you find none of the sign in the possible bacterial infection then you proceed down and look for signs which are present in the yellow box and you make the classification of local bacterial infection there may be a situation if a baby has got one sign from the red box and the one or two sign from the yellow box but since we require only one sign to classify the uh, possible bacterial infection we will make the classification of possible serious bacterial infection even if the child has got the sign from the yellow box. Having classified the baby into either possible bacterial infection or local bacterial infection or even none then you proceed further and classify the child for either severe jaundice or jaundice. Now we will just review the box of the red uh, box for the jaundice. Now palms and soles if they are stained yellow or if the jaundice appears within 24 hours or if it is persisting beyond 14 days places the child into severe jaundice and rest of the things if there are palms and soles are not involved or the jaundice is uh, in the coming after 24 hours and which is in the less than 30, uh, this 14 days this places the child into jaundice. Similarly, if the baby's temperature is between 35.5 to 36.4, it will be classified as low body temperature. Above this range and below this range will be classified into possible bacterial infection. So, this is how we classify the box of the uh, or the checking for the uh, possible bacterial infection and jaundice. Now, please remember while in these uh, classifications the principle is starting from top and going down even if you get one sign from red and one from the yellow it is always the red classification which we are choosing because here we are requiring only one sign to place into either possible bacterial infection or local bacterial infection so this is how we have to classify and then once you classify this then we will move further down uh, thank you, Dr. Chalani. Uh, now you understood how to classify because once we elicit the signs, then you have to classify and then only you can identify the treatment. Uh, now, before you uh, go further, I will request now Dr. Nangia to tell us how the signs are recorded in a form that is called the recording form. Now, you will see how the signs, once it is elicited, how they are filled. Uh, Dr. Nangia, can you yeah. tell us here? Uh, the, uh, the any information like which we have been doing till now whenever you see a baby you record its information on the OPD slip or in the case sheet if you have admitted the baby. Similarly whenever you have assessed the baby whether the young infant or old, the older child we have to record the information and based on that we are making a classification and then writing the treatment. Now for this also we have got two recording forms can we focus just uh, we have got the one for the young infant it is written management of sick young infant age up to two months yeah and then we can also see the it is management of sick young infant age two months up to five years now please remember to pick up the correct form and the each form has got the the front where we assess the child for the some signs and then based on that we have got classification. Now back on the back of the uh, form there is a place for writing the treatment and we will learn that part <coughs> subsequently. Now we will just focus how to write down the information uh, on the recording form. This is the enlarged version which we are showing you and this is the back you can see which shows how to write down the treatment on that. Now we will uh, show you with some example how to write down the uh, information on this recording form. Uh, I will request uh, Dr. Sushma to write down the information. Let us see how to write down the information on that. Now here you will find there is a place on the top the name, age, weight and temperature. So for example baby's name is baby Meena so we will write down on the column wherever it is there baby Meena age is to be written in weeks 
in young infant age is to be recorded in weeks so let's say it is age is 6 weeks <coughs> weight is 3 kilogram and then <coughs> the after writing the information then you will also write down the temperature now filling up the recording form is done by three ways the wherever the space is there we will write down the information as she has shown you now for example initial visit or it is follow up visit you tick mark it whether it is initial visit or follow up visit right this is to make the uniformity so that anybody who records the information he has to record in this fashion now coming down what are the uh, problems the baby has got so write down the way the mother tells you for example the mother has come that baby is not breathing well or baby is not taking feeds well so we will be writing out in that space what is the mother's complaint about the baby now we will go further down and we have already learned how to assess the child for possible bacterial infection so similarly we will see how the information is to be recorded on the recording form now any sign or symptoms which is present is to be encircled like let us say in this child we saw we asked the question has the infant had convulsion mother said the the baby did not have convulsion then we will go on the right side count the breaths in one minute we counted the breaths to be were 64 breaths per minute so you write down in the space 64 breaths per minute repeat if it elevated so that means since the cutoff value for fast breathing is 60 and above we counted again and we found it is 66 so we will write down 66 now what is this 66 is the fast breathing so we will encircle fast breathing this is how you have to encircle the fast breathing now we will go further down now we also found that this child is having bulging fontanelle so we will encircle bulging <coughs> fontanelle this is how the information is to be recorded we will go further down the next question is does the young infant has diarrhea if the mother says yes we will tick yes and then we will go further down to assess the child for the signs of dehydration similarly if we go further down checking for feeding problem and malnutrition and anything which is present we have to be ticking it we are not going to circle yes or no right so the, that means there are three things either we have to tick or we have to write down the information or we have to encircle the sign so these are the three things which have to be filled now coming to the immunization because that is the information which is to be filled in a little different way concentrate on check the young infant's immunization status any immunization which has which the child has already received is to be ticked like for example if we presume that this child has received BCG and OPV at birth so BCG is ticked OPV is ticked now today the child is six weeks old and he needs DPT1, DP, OPV1 and Hepatitis B so first dose so they have to be uncircled so any injection which is due today will be uncircled so if we see the information which we have put it in this either you record the information in this for example the information is 6 weeks or weight is 3 kilogram then the breath counts the space filling the blanks is to be done and if that sign is present it has to be encircled this is how the information is done now let us see on the based on that information because since this is a fast breathing I made the classification of a possible bacterial infection so I will write down here the classification of possible serious bacterial infection this is how we have to record the information and if we further go down then in the immunization if suppose then return for next immunization then we will be writing the date in this column so that's how we will fill up all this suppose here the diarrhea suppose it was no if we ask the mother and the mother says no then of course we will not assess the child for signs of dehydration so we will skip this box and then 
we will come to the box of checking feeding problem and malnutrition. This is how to record the information uh, on the recording form. And once it has been done, then we will learn in the later part of this, uh, this uh, today's session how to write the treatment, how to identify the treatment and put it on the recording forms back page. Uh, thank you Dr. Chalani uh, for uh, telling in details how to fill up the form. Uh, students, uh, will, you will get chances to fill up the form in your logbook and when you see the form, uh, you can very well understand how to fill it up. You will be doing more exercises uh, at the medical colleges that the program study center where you will be filling up the form again and again so that all the types of diseases are covered under IMNCI. Uh, the next box after bacterial infection comes the diarrhea. So now let us see what are the signs that you have to elicit in diarrhea and how you will <coughs> proceed to uh, identify the treatment for diarrhea. Uh, now uh, let us uh, have the video of diarrhea. The main symptom of diarrhea, ask... Does the child have diarrhea? If the mother says yes, assess further. Ask... For how long? The number of days determines whether the child has persistent diarrhea. Next, ask... Is there blood in the stool? Blood in the stool is a sign of dysentery. Then every child with diarrhea is assessed for signs of dehydration. To assess for dehydration. Look at the young infant's general condition. Is the young infant lethargic or unconscious? Is the young infant restless and irritable? This young infant is not lethargic or restless and irritable. This young infant is lethargic. Look at the child's eyes. This child has eyes which are sunken. If you're not sure if a child's eyes are sunken, you should ask the mother whether the child's eyes look unusual to her. Pinch the skin of the abdomen. Does it go back very slowly, taking longer than two seconds? Does it go back slowly? Or does it go back immediately? To pinch the skin of the abdomen, ask the mother to hold the child so he's lying flat on her lap. Locate the area on the child's abdomen halfway between the umbilicus and the side of the abdomen. Place the thumb and first finger on the skin of the abdomen so that when you pinch the skin, the fold of the skin will be in a line up and down on the child's body and not across the child's body. Firmly pick up the skin and some fat beneath the skin. Pinch the skin for one second and then release it by separating your thumb and first finger. When you release the skin, look to see if the skin pinch goes back very slowly taking longer than two seconds, slowly or immediately. This child's skin goes back very slowly, taking longer than two seconds. With this child, the skin goes back slowly, in less than two seconds. With this child, the skin pinch goes back immediately. To correctly assess dehydration,
Consider each of these signs and use them to classify the child as having severe dehydration, some dehydration, or no dehydration. You will now have the opportunity to practice what you have learned using an actual case study. Gemma is 45 days old. Her weight is 3 kilograms. Her temperature is 37 degrees. So, uh, now you saw the uh, video picture of the diarrhea assessment and how to assess the different signs of related to diarrhea, like pinching the skin, and uh, seeing how the sunken eyes, so all those things you saw. Now I will request Dr. Chalani to discuss yes. that how to classify, uh, okay, Dr. Uh, Sushma. So both of them can help us in classifying uh, diarrhea, and then we will go to the next slot that is breastfeeding. Dr. Nangya, please. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now we will move on to assessing and classifying for diarrhea. The first and foremost thing is you have to ask, does the child have diarrhea? Does the young infant have diarrhea? And if the mother says yes, you had seen that we are going to take yes in the recording form. And diarrhea is specified by the mother. Whenever the mother says that yes, diarrhea is present, we will take that as yes, because the mothers would usually know when the consistency of the stool has changed compared to what it was previously. <clears throat> usually diarrhea basically means that there is more fluid in the stool but for this we are not going to go into the details of this whatever the mother tells us that is what is diarrhea because she can know what the consistency has been previously and how it has changed now once we are sure that yes diarrhea is present we are going to take the diarrhea as yes and then only then we are going to assess the child further for signs of diarrhea so in this once the diarrhea is there we have, we have asked two questions the first question is for how long. This has relevance for assessment and classification of diarrhea because if the diarrhea lasts 14 days or more, the classification would be in terms of persistent diarrhea. And the second question is, is there blood in stool? So that has relevance in terms of if there is blood in stool, this is to be classified as severe dysentery or severe persistent diarrhea, we will see what is the classification for which condition. So basically, if there is diarrhea, you ask two questions. The first one is for how long and the second one is, is there blood in stool? After having asked these questions and if they are present, we are going to encircle them on the form. We go and assess for diarrhea dehydration. So now we are going to assess for the degree of dehydration based on three relevant things that we are going to assess, which will be in terms of look, listen and feel. Since there is no, no listening here, we are going to look for and we are going to feel for certain signs as you saw in the video. So the first sign to look for is, is the child, what is the child's general condition? Is he lethargic or unconscious or is he restless or irritable? Here I would just like to give you a clue that if you say that the child is lethargic or unconscious, most of the babies sleep most of the time, but if the baby is sleeping at an unusual hour according to the mother, or if he is sleeping too long, or on your assessment when you try and wake the child, he just wakes up for a while and then again he lapses back into sleep. So this child is obviously a child who is not arousal enough and who is a child who is lethargic or if it is worse than this, then this child is probably unconscious. So we are taking that sign together whether he is lethargic or unconscious. The second situation could be that the child is restless and irritable. This is a child who is continuously restless. He is irritable. Whenever you approach him, he becomes irritable. He is only pacified by providing him breastfeeding. So whenever he is at the mother's breast, he is pacified. And rest of the times, he is continuously irritable. He is crying. He is cranky. So only then you are going to encircle that sign as a sign which is a child who is irritable or restless. The second one is look for sunken eyes. Again, the clue here will be that you are going to look at the eyes from the side rather than looking right from the front. So when you look from the side and you find that the eyeball is sunken, only then you are going to label this sign as an eyeball which has gone in. If you have a doubt in that, you can always cross-check with the mother and you have to ask the mother not whether the child's eyes are sunken or not, but what you are going to ask is, is there a difference in the child's eyes 
as compared to before the illness. So let the mother explain because there will be mothers who will say the child's eyes are less brighter or there will be mothers who will say that the child's eyes are now he is more weeping or he is less weeping. So we are specifically looking for a child's eyes who has, which are sunken. So don't ask a direct question. Are the child's eyes sunken? It's quite likely she might say yes. So this is how you're going to assess for this sign and ask only if you are in doubt. The third thing that you're going to see is the skin pinch, which you have seen in the video very clearly and you find it going back immediately, slowly or very slowly and it was amply illustrated on the video. So based on these three signs, we are going to classify for dehydration. So now you see in this chart, you are looking for these signs and out of the three signs, if any two are present, we are going to label this as severe dehydration. So what are these? If the child is lethargic or unconscious or he has sunken eyes or the skin pinch goes back very slowly. So out of the three, if two are positive, we are going to label that as severe dehydration and the child will be managed according to that. And what do we do for a pink classification? This child needs to be referred urgently, which we will discuss when we discuss the treatment. Now, if none of these signs are present or only one sign you are getting here because you need two or more signs. So if it is only one which is present here, you move to the next box, which is the lower one, which is the yellow box. Now look, is the child restless or irritable? Does the child have sunken eyes? Or is the child's skin pinch going back only slowly? Not very slowly, but slowly. So if you find two signs out of these three, you would classify this as some dehydration and proceed in that direction. However, if there is only one sign here or only one sign here, we are going to move down to see. And what is written here is that there are not enough signs to classify either as severe or as some dehydration. So this is what is labeled as no dehydration. And here the child is to be sent home on home treatment. So this is how we are going to classify for diarrhea in terms of dehydration. The second classification is in terms of the duration of diarrhea and if the diarrhea is 14 days or longer, this is to be classified here and with that if there is diarrhea which has lasted 14 days or more, this is severe persistent diarrhea and you see this is a pink classification. Similarly, based on presence of blood in stool, if there is blood in stool, this is to be labeled as severe dysentery. So in diarrhea classification, you are seeing that there are three pink boxes one yellow and one green. The first big box is for classification of dehydration. The second box is for classification of duration of diarrhea. And the last one is for classification in terms of diarrhea, which is the stool which is containing blood. This is how you have to classify for diarrhea. You have to assess and classify for diarrhea and dehydration. Mm, okay, uh, I think we are coming to the end of the second session. Uh, we will be back again uh, for the third session after 15 minutes, that is at uh, 3.30. Uh, before that, uh, Dr. Chalani, you want to take a half a minute? Yeah, I just, uh, just want to clear that this uh, box of the diarrhea assessment is an optional box. It is unlike the first box that was compulsory box where you have to check for each and every baby for possible bacterial infection and jaundice. But this box, if the mother says yes, yes only yes. then you will proceed. And that too, many times mother may say that the frequency of the stool is more. But that is not diarrhea. As we all know that breastfed babies, they have increased frequency. But if she says that frequency and consistency have changed from the usual pattern, then you assess the baby for uh, diarrhea. Okay, uh, thank you Dr. Chalani. I think we will uh, take care of this definition of diarrhea, especially in case of young infant and we will discuss more after the break. Uh, so please be with us. We will be back at 3.30 p.m.